Today on Twin Cam, Metros. So Melvin has been off the road for a little while because he's had problems with his rear brakes. Now, when I was going down to the NEC video, which I will put up in the corner, um, I noticed something wrong. I noticed that one of the rear brakes was binding and it was. And so finally, we're going to fix that issue. Now, it wasn't bad enough to stop me from driving the car on local journeys, but it certainly made me not want to take it on any long journeys because the brake would heat up, I'd end up using loads of fuel, etc., etc. So it's on this side of the car, on the off side, the driver's side. Um, and I've already stripped down the, um, the rear brakes on both sides. So I have two little plastic tubs full of all the brake parts. So in here I have obviously the shoes, um, which will not be going back on. I've got a new set of shoes to go on. Um, the springs, um, all the little hardware that goes with them all, and the handbrake levers. So these are, as I say, handbrake levers. On this end, um, the handbrake cable is attached, and so that pulls on this, and um, these two sides here actuate the handbrake. They act on the shoes, which are here, and they push them out into the drum to actuate the handbrake. Now this is completely seized. It is rusted solid. Um, so that is a little bit of what was causing this rear brake issue. However, I will show, I will take the drums back off the brakes and I'll show you inside to show you what else was going wrong. So this is the first time I've ever touched rear brakes, well, I've ever touched drum brakes on a car. Um, and so this will be quite interesting and a bit of a learning curve as well. Um, so we are on the offside driver's side of Melvin, um, and this was the side that was binding. So everything is stripped down. Um, and if you don't know how drum brakes go together, you would usually have the drum, which is this thing, this big heavy thing. Um, and on the inside of it would press the shoes, which are those two things over there. And they would be pressed into the drum, as you can see that shiny edge there. And that's how the brakes work. Um, so the drum is mounted to the outside of the drive flange here um, with a little screw in it. Um, and so this, the, this is the hub itself. Um, so the wheel mounts on there, your wheel bearings in here. Um, and this is the brake back plate. So the brakes are all mounted here, the shoes are mounted there and there. Um, and they're actuated by this wheel cylinder down here. So you have a hydraulic line going into the back there. Um, you press the brake pedal, uh, fluid shoots down there into uh, the cylinder, which presses out on each of the shoes. And the shoes press out onto the drum and you get braking. And they're adjusted up here by this adjuster. There's a little peg on the back of it, you put a spanner on there, and you adjust the brake shoes to have them sitting um, correctly. So that's the basics of a drum brake setup. Um, now this being the back of the car, it also has the handbrake to deal with. So you see that little hole there? Um, that is where the handbrake lever goes through, and there's a little rubber boot on the back there. So that's the handbrake cable, and it's the same on the other side over there. Handbrake cable is pulled, pulls on that, pulls on the handbrake lever, um, which presses out and pushes the, um, the shoes into the drum, applying the handbrake. Um, so those handbrake levers, well, the handbrake lever on this side is completely seized. Can be fixed, but it's seized. Um, now, the adjuster on the top, while looking through, I've also found the adjuster is broken. It's not adjusting correctly. So I've bought a new adjuster for this side. The one on the other side is fine, fortunately. Um, so that will be a little bit of the issue as well as the, as the handbrake levers. So uh, we'll come back to um, this later. We will um, clean massively both sides um, and then we'll put the new adjuster on this side. Um, and um, we'll reassemble everything with new shoes and all that kind of stuff. Um, and then we should have new, essentially, rear brakes. So now I have all the bits to fix the rear brakes on this car and essentially completely refresh them because I don't have any new handbrake levers. Instead, I'm going to give refurbishing them a go. So I have a tub of this, which is built Hamber DOC. 
Uh, and now this, essentially, it's, it's a rust converter, but it's a very, very concentrated, very, very powerful rust converter that I can put, um, can dilute it in water, put it in a pot like this, for example, uh, put the handbrake levers in, and then it should bring them back completely to bare metal. Um, and to stop them from corroding, to obviously respray them, I'm just gonna spray them in gold hammerite because gold is the color they would have been from factory. Um, so yeah, we are, I'm not doing this professionally, I'm not doing this properly, but we are doing something that is approaching a refurbishment of the rear brakes on this car. So I decided to make the solution off camera because I thought that was boring, but I have taken the deoxy and I have made a little bath. So that is the near side, that's the off side. I also have the um, these like pin-like things that locate the um, that locate the shoes in there as well. Because I thought, why not? Um, so that already seems to be doing its stuff, really. Um, seems to be a lot of stuff floating around in there. I mean, these were very heavily corroded. So the minimum recommended um, oh, what's the word? Um, dilution. Uh, was one part deox to 19 parts water. Um, and then it says a maximum dilution of one to four. So I did one to eight, I think I did. So it's it's a stronger dilution because these are quite heavily corroded. You already start to see. You can see it doing its stuff. Now, this stuff has an incredibly good reputation. I've got a number of friends that have used this stuff and said that it is essentially the best product anyone has ever made ever so um it should be good stuff also it's not harmful there are no you know labels on anything all it says is keep away from children standard uh, wear gloves for prolonged skin contact standard um does not emit harmful vapors will not harm the environment so so if it's doing its job which it seems to be doing very well and that's been in there for maximum two minutes and already it's looking like it's doing something. So this already I'm quite impressed with. But we'll come back in however long I deem necessary. Well, unfortunately the camera cut off during the last shot, but now here we are about 36 hours later or something. So I've left these in, um, in the solution for a long time, but they are looking virtually brand new. There's a couple of little deposits still on it, but I'm sure they will brush off. Um, and that's the one from the, um, the near side of the car. This is the one from the off side. I've moved them around a few times. This was the one that was seized. And there we go, perfectly freed off. Um, so I could have just tried to get this going with a hammer and some WD-40 or something, but this, you can even see, the part numbers in them, which you wouldn't have had a hope in hell of seeing before I did this, but there you go, that's the power of this stuff. So I'll get these out properly, I will clean them up, and then we will go and spray them. I thought I might as well show you again before we spray them, just how absolutely incredible that Deox stuff is. I'm astonished. I mean, I thought they were going to come up well because I've heard such good things, but for them to come up this well, I'm absolutely flabbergasted. So obviously now this needs spraying or they'll um, flash corrode. So let's actually get to it.
So back out to the car and now it's been a few days for to let these cure a little bit I have the handbrake levers that are looking ace um, and I have two of them of course and they're both completely free and lovely and I also have of course all the um, shoe locating pin things um, so they've all sprayed up really really nicely and they've all come out of the um, deox treatment really nicely now spraying them is not the best thing for them really to be honest they should actually have been plated in an ideal world but there are no platers near me um, that aren't just for commercial sakes that won't do just things in bulk so you know it, it's just not economical for me to do it from where i am um, and what is very cool I'll show it on this one actually you can see all the part numbers now in the in the levers which is ace um, so these should have been plated they won't last as long being sprayed as they will plated and of course it's very difficult to get into um, the pivot as well with with the paint so i'm going to make sure that i um protect this pivot um when i assemble everything back together so they are there i don't know which side is which anymore they've ended up getting mixed up i thought i knew which side was which but then i realized that i didn't so be a bit of a guessing game when we actually come to it but there we go so um with those done i have a multitude of tools around me i have the sh the drum off the rear brakes i have brake cleaner i have new parts uh, which we will need i have lots of tools and i also have a drain pan so that i can catch all the brake cleaner because we're going to completely clean all of this backing plate here now um it would make sense to take the backing plate off and do this properly but i didn't want to take the wheel cylinder out because i don't want to end up ble bleeding the brakes um, so i decided just to leave everything here intact um, so i don't have to mess around with hydraulics clean it as best i can and then reassemble everything so our first step is not to start cleaning but because the adjuster is knackered on this side we're gonna take the adjuster out so it is a little bit dark around here um, my camera doesn't seem to like focusing on dark areas it seems to want to make everything black and make the light places light um, i don't know why silly cameras um, but um, this at the top here is the adjuster so the wheel cylinder is at the, is at the bottom that's what actually you know induces the braking and this is what adjusts the shoes so um, we need to take this adjuster out obviously so on the back of it i'll put a picture up there are two uh, 12 millimeter nuts on the back and in the center is the peg that you actually adjust on so if i get in here finally with a big hammer so now we have apart from the wheel cylinder and of course the hub um, this is all bare now um, so let's get clear everything out of the way get my drain pan underneath it and we'll get some brake cleaner on it
So, that's a heck of a lot cleaner than it was. Uh, it's not perfect, uh, because it's difficult to get in above the wheel cylinder, and of course, it's a bit corroded, because it's been there for 30 years, and it will get corroded. Um, there are bits of it that are great, um, but yeah, I shall, um, I'll probably clean this up a little bit more actually off camera, and then I'll go around and do the other side, and then we'll come back over here, and we'll fit the new adjuster, and then we should be able to start getting everything assembled again. So now we're back around this side of the car, we can start reassembling. So unlike on the other side where we weren't changing the adjuster, although you've not actually seen it to be honest, um, we need to actually put the adjuster in. Um, so the other side, I just decided to do it by, by leaving the adjuster in. So I have a Rimmers package, standard for MG Rover parts, um, and they have new adjusters. So. So there we go, that is a new brake adjuster. Um, so I think it's the same both sides. I don't think it makes a difference which way I put it round. Um, so yeah, so this will go in. So there's elastic band around it, um, holding the pins in because they'll just fall out otherwise. Um, in fact, I'll leave that on while we're, put, while we're installing it because that makes sense. And this should just go on there like that. Um, so I will rescue the bolts that I just threw across the garage um, and I'll come back once I'm actually put going towards bolting it on. Bolts have been rescued and little washers. That serves me right for just abandoning them, abandoning them on the garage floor. Um, <laughs> very nearly a calamity and uh, I'll have to go and order some bolts and come back another day. So the adjuster is here. Um, I'm going to um, smear some copper grease on the back of this, which I have just over here. So I'm going to smear a little bit of copper grease on this, just so that if ever I want to try and get it off in the future, it won't be a massive pain in the backside. There you go, so it's just a, a light smear of it on there. And I'm also gonna um, smear some on the threads as well. So again, if and when it comes to it in the future, we have to get it off again. It won't be a massive pain in the backside. So that can now go on there. We can put our washers on. We can tighten it up. Stupid things. So that is now solid on there. Which is lovely. Brilliant. And as soon as I take the thing off, the actual adjuster peg comes out. So those two are sat in there and it's adjusted fully off at the moment. So if you turn at the back, it adjusts either way. So you see they're being pushed out there. And I'll turn it out and they would, if they had any force on them, they would go back in. So now what do we need? Well, I have my little box of goodies here. These are the old shoes. So despite the fact that this is a side that was dragging, there's still quite a lot of life left on those shoes, but obviously we're not reusing them because that would be stupid. Um, so what is in this box are these two springs and these two little plates that go on the back of those springs. We'll get to those in a bit. We've got a clevis pin, which is not being used again. And we have the two springs. So these are what we are going to need next. In fact, no, I tell a lie. What we're actually going to need are the handbrake levers. Uh, well, one of them anyway. So on this um, side of the car, uh, the little kind of grommet where 
uh, the handbrake lever goes through is there. So I believe this is the correct round. It will be the correct round. This is the one for this side. So if I very carefully push that through there. No, nope, I've done that wrong. I'm going to have to do that. And then push that through. And there you go. So the handbrake lever sits across behind the, the hub, um, sits across and acts on each shoe, which will be on each side. So that's good. That is sat in about the correct place. Um, it does seem slightly odd to me that nothing is vertical on this. Like the adjuster isn't at 12 o'clock relative to you know where the car sits. It's at about 11 o'clock, which is strange. So the handbrake lever is resting on the... Um, on the wheel cylinder on only this side. On that side, it's above it. It's a bit strange. Um, <laughs> I don't quite understand what's going on there, but, you know, here we are. So, next we need our new shoes. So, these are genuine new old stock MG Rover brake shoes. Um, and now I just need to figure out which way round they go. So I've got some reference photos. Um, from when it was disassembled and also reference photos from somebody else's car uh, which should show me which way round the shoes go. So, according to what I have, I believe that shoe should be there. Uh, and this is important because you've got all the different holes here. Now the shoes are actually the same on, on, on each side. Uh, for each thing but they're just oriented differently so i believe this one should be here um so you've got the trailing edge there the leading edge of the shoe is there so you see the friction material doesn't go all the way to the end um, on one side and it very nearly does on the other so it's important to get these right right way around according to the picture i have from when this was all disassembled this one should go here um now that means, I believe, that that one should go there like that. So, let's actually now <laughs> figure out what we need to do next. So, the handbrake lever is in. So we're going to need to now organise the springs. So what I'm going to do, you won't be able to see this. In fact, you know what, let's show you. Because I'm ever so kind and I care about you so very much. Um, so there are the shoes in the correct orientation relative to where they're going up on um, up on the car. That's a little elastic band we got. So I need a little bit of copper grease because what we're going to do is we're going to um, put some copper grease on every surface that um, something touches on here so that everything can move freely, nothing gets jammed, um, and everyone has a good time because, you know, you need a little bit, little, little bit of lubricant to make sure no one gets hurt. So these are the holes that the springs go through on each side. That's very important. And also where the handbrake levers go in as well. Just smear a little bit around the place. And also these two large holes at the side here, these need a little bit of copper grease on them because... In fact, you know what, they don't actually. Um, because these are the two holes that actually locate the shoes on onto the drums. They don't matter yet. They'll be the last thing we install. But they matter to keep the shoes in place. So, this spring here is the top spring. Um, so this is the one that will go on there. And I'm going to be careful not to touch the friction material because I've still got a little bit of copper grease on my hands. I don't want to get any copper grease on the actual friction material because that will be a nightmare and you'll never get, ever get it off. So, let me move the camera again. Can you see that? The lighting really isn't very good, but you can kind of see. So, what we're going to do is bring the shoes onto the backing plate itself. I'm going to locate them both in the adjuster. 
there. There you go. That's in the adjuster on one side. And that's in the adjuster on the other side. You hear it click into place. So the adjuster, obviously because it's brand new, is all the way out. So uh, the shoes are as close as they'll be to each other here. Uh, when they're adjusted, they'll adjust out into the drum itself. So this is a bit you won't be able to see. I need to get, first of all, I'm gonna need to turn that around a bit. So I need to get the shoes engaged in the wheel cylinder. So what I'm doing here is, at the top here, you see there are little, little notches in the adjuster where the shoes sit. On the wheel cylinder, one of them's turned around while I've been cleaning it, so I just need to get a screwdriver and just turn it round a bit. Better do it from the bottom. There you go. Is the other side right? The other side is right. So, I think I will do this side first. And get it located in the handbrake lever through this hole, which isn't going particularly well. Well, that's not good. That's come out the adjuster, so let's get it back in. Again, everything is now sprung loaded, so I'm wrestling against. against elastic potential. So I'll start with this side actually because it seems a little bit easier. So I'll get the handbrake lever in and then there you go. So I've got the handbrake lever in there on the left and I've got um, the shoe in the wheel cylinder down there. Now I just need to do the other side. So what I need to do now that everything is actually engaged is to put the bottom spring on. So this is going to be an absolute nightmare because it needs to sit up behind um, all this kind of gubbins here. So um, what's the best way to put this on? I think the best way is to get it up behind here and engage it first on this side. You're not going to be able to see this very well. Um, But there we are. <laughs> I'm going to adjust, actually. I'm going to adjust this adjuster out um, quite a lot because I want a little bit more space to play with here um, to be able to get this spring behind the shoes because it just isn't the space. So. There you go. Um, so yeah, you won't be able to see that again because ugh, the access is dreadful. But on this side, we have the hole where the spring is through, it is engaged. So it runs behind the hub and just where my finger is, it's poking out. So we need to get it from there across to this hole here. So we need to get it across that distance. So what we're gonna do is take this screwdriver and wedge it over. Wedge it through here until I get it in the hole. It's maybe a challenge. Got to get it in the right hole as well. Again, it's dangerous if you don't get it in the right hole. Oh, you know what? Now that I've got the spring in, I can adjust it back quite a bit. If I adjust it back, I bring the shoes in, so I need to stretch the spring less, so it'll be easy to get it in. Fabulous. So we've got a little bit... Oh. Fabulous. So we have everything reassembled. We have 
um, springs, top and bottom. There and there, there and there. And we have the new adjuster in, which is great. We have the new shoes in. Um, this should now work as a braking system, but there's one more thing we need to do, and these are those springs before. So they go in here and here, and they're held in by the pins that I painted up. Ta-da! Uh, and then they've got the little um, kind of faceplate thing on top of them. They turn, and then they lock in. However, I'm not going to be putting those on, because we're going to have to come back to this another day. Um, I was hoping to have the car back today, but unfortunately, I have noticed that the wheel cylinder on this side is leaking. Um, when I disassembled everything, I pulled back the, the little rubber covers and checked, and I couldn't see any fluid. Nothing was coming out, but as soon as I've put these shoes back in, I heard a squelching noise, and I've now got a little puddle of brake fluid on the floor. So, that's not good. So, I've just ordered a new wheel cylinder, and we shall come back in a few days. We shall unhook the shoes, and we shall install a new wheel cylinder. Blair. How annoying is that? Change of plan. We're now a few days later and the wheel cylinder hasn't turned up, but that's not the point. I'm going to be hounded for this, but um, and rightly so, to be honest, but I'm not going to be changing the wheel cylinder yet. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to put it back together, we're going to put those locating pins in, um, and the springs and stuff, um, and then we're going to put it back together, adjust the brakes up, and then the car will be back on the road. I put that in inverted commas because the car will be coming back off the road shortly. So the leaking from this wheel cylinder, it is weeping actually, should I say, not leaking. Um, that's oil, so ignore that, but there is no brake fluid on this cardboard. Uh, it's been sat for a few days and even when I put, it's such a tiny amount of brake fluid coming out of it that yes, the wheel cylinder does need changing. Yes, it's knackered, but it's not gushing out all over the place. So, Melvin's MOT expires on something like the 7th of October. Today is the 14th of June, I think. And I'm not going to put him in for an MOT this year. What is instead going to happen is that I'm going to take Melvin off the road. I'm going to send him off to a body shop to have them address all the rust on the car. And then over the winter, I'm going to drop the rear subframe out and completely restore everything. So over this winter, the rear half of the car will be restored. Then the next year, the front half of the car will be restored. Um, because I've had this car for five years now. I've done about 25,000 miles in it and it's showing it. I drove it through winters for quite a few years and that's just what it does. It's a 30 year old car as is. Um, it was in lovely condition when I bought it. I mean, it had some really cheap repairs done to it, but it was generally in lovely condition. And I want to get it back. To, well, I say back to that. I want to make it better. I want to make it better than factory. And this car deserves it because I love it so very much. So, that is all to come. And my Patreon supporters already know about that. So, we're going to do the wrong thing and just put it back together and keep an eye on the leakage and keep an eye on the brake fluid over the next however long. The car's not going to be driven all that much, I just want it to be able to be on the road to take it to a few car shows and to have a little hoon around the countryside every now and then. Um, but yeah, so that's what's going on now. No new wheel cylinder, yes I'm an idiot, but let's just get to reassembling all this stuff on this drum. So here we are again. Um, I've had a little tidy up from last time, so I've got everything now nicely sorted around me. And let's remove this cardboard, don't really need it. I wanted to put that there to see how badly it was leaking. I only saw tiny, tiny little weeps, and it did have a little... Um, when I put this shoe in, it, it squelched a little bit, but it didn't do much leaking. Only when I really had a look at it could I see anything. So, I'm going to hope for the best. <laughs> And do the wrong thing. If you've got a car, don't do what I'm doing because I'm an idiot. Total, total idiot. Uh, but what we need to do now is... Do I have... I do have what I need. Good. So, as I've said previously, um, although it's a new day for me, these pins go in the back of the drums there. You see that poking out there? Um, so these pins go in there. The springs go on top of them there. 
and when you put the cap on the springs it holds the entire shoe where it is virtually um, so it just allows it to move that little bit and means that it doesn't end up falling completely out of alignment so this is a massive pain in the arse of a job so bear with me what I'm going to do we've got these little caps um, they go in that way and um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to So if I put it in a pair of pliers like that, I can then put it in and turn it and I can put more force on it. Um, I don't really want to do this with my hands because it's not ideal. So I need to make sure that they line up with each other. So I've got, the way you can see it, the pins on, um, well the end of the pin is oriented the same way as I'm putting it on here. There you go. So that spring is on, it's been turned, and there you go. So this shoe is now solid. It's in there, it can move a little bit, but not enormously, just allow it to move in and out. Oh dear. So now time for the other one, which you won't be able to see because it's round here. Ah, wank. Ah. Oh, there you go. Oh. And we're done. So now, all this is assembled. This should work as a braking system. Um, all we need to do now, we need to hook up the handbrake behind it, which we'll do in a minute. But first, we need to put the drum on. So just off camera, I'm going to give it another little go over with some brake clean. Very good. I'm also going to just get a little bit more. I'll fold that over. And just go over the friction material. Get any crap off. And you see, just from that, There you go. So hopefully that is now clean. That should all now work. Need to make sure that the drum lines up with that screw hole there because if I can find it, there it is. Again, rimmers. I have a new drum retaining screw to go in. Where's my screwdriver? There you go. There you go. And that's lovely and free. Well, ish. Um, so we're going to have to adjust this. But first, well, as we're adjusting actually, we'll go around the other side and we'll hook up the handbrake mechanism. I don't know how steady this footage is going to be because we're now handheld. Um, but you can see the new adjuster up there. 
and down here we have the back of the handbrake lever and we have the handbrake cable so these need to meet up an awful awful camera work well, I'll have to put it down if I'm going to do it because I need two hands but they need to go together and then I will put the new oh what's it called um, clevis spin through I will put the um, Oh, I'm losing my words. We'll put it back together and then I'll come back in a minute. And there we go. So barring the very crusty underside of the car, which as I said is going to be restored, we have handbrake lever, clevis pin with this little uh, lock thing. Again, words escape me today. Um, we have the new pins that locate the shoes. We have the new adjuster. And if we go to the other side of the car, again, all kinds of loveliness. Everything is done, everything is complete. And on that side, the wheel is even on. Um, so we should put the wheel on and then we will adjust up the brakes um, to what I think is correct. Although I've never adjusted brakes before, so they're probably gonna be wrong. So more handheld mode. Um, that side is adjusted all the way off and it is dragging a little bit more than I'd want it to. But I'm gonna leave it and I'm just gonna balance this one up to that same rate because at the moment, um, I think there's a tiny, tiny bit of the adjuster on this side, and that is, you can hear it dragging ever so slightly, but it's still very, very, very free, as you can see. So, I'm going to tighten this one up slightly, just to make it drag a little bit more, to make it kind of balance with the other side, and then we'll be done. That's dragging a little bit too much, but it's about the same as the other side. And um, once it starts driving down the road, it will wear down the um, shoes ever slightly um, and evenly as well, which is important. Um, so the shoes wear evenly, the drum will start to bed in evenly, and hopefully that should be okay. Um, I do think they're dragging a little bit too much though, but once we get out on the road, and once I've driven it a little bit, that will be the real test. So. There we go, there's a very, very, very long and relaxed video on me doing drum breaks for the first time. So I feel quite achieved today, um, or over the past week or so since I've been doing this. So I'm very happy. Hopefully it all works. Um, I can't actually take the car out at the moment because of other cars in the way. Melody is right there. Um, but if you hear about a disaster, then it's been a disaster. If you don't, then take it as that everything's been a success. So. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, then please do click like and subscribe to Twin Cam as well. I'm forever indebted to my wonderful Patreon supporters, so if you'd like to support me that way, then please do follow the link in the description. And I'll have more videos coming along soon.